Navy hunt subs. And that's what you do in Mattel's new sonar sub hunt game. Alright, moment of truth. Yes, it still works. 55 years old, it still works. Hello everyone, it's uh, Daniel, and today we're going to be looking at Sonar Sub Hunt, an electronic board game from 1963. And no, this was not a copy of Battleship. This precedes Hasbro by about four years. Looking at this time period in the context of board games, I believe this trend in war games came from the numerous vets coming home from the various foreign wars, and the kids who probably wanted to imitate their dads, uncles, and older brothers' heroic adventures. And from what I've read on these naval-based war games, they've been around since the 1910s and was played with pen and paper. Now, I don't know if the Intellivision game is based off of the board game, but it's something to take note of in Mattel's toy portfolio. The game is somewhat similar, if you squint your eyes a bit. So after that brief little history, let's unbox this guy and see what we got. So the best part about this is, from what I can tell, it's relatively untouched. The box is a pizza box type setup. I've never really seen that in a board game. And this was back in the time when I think customer tampering wasn't a huge issue as it is nowadays because I don't see any type of fastening. It's just a straight box. You open it, take it out, play with it. That's about it. Overall, the box is in excellent condition. And we can see a, a brief summary of the game here on the back. Mattel's Sonar Sub Hunt, a naval battle game. Battle formation, arming for attack, searching for enemy subs. You know, standard battle procedure, I'm sure. So opening it up, it's this thing is huge. It's really hard to get it all on the camera. But the pieces come under this insert here. It kind of has a inventory. 16 submarines, 8 mines, 6 crowns. And everything is still in its original packaging. Nothing has been touched. Even the crowns are intact and not overly melted. The plastic is really brittle though on this main console and on the packaging. So there's two sides to this, and scoring plates, and the sonar screen, and firing counter. It, you know, it's it's a representation of a battle station in board game form. It's a lot of plastic. panels come off and it seems like some of it's kind of it might have gotten broken in storage or on its journeys and here's the manual it's not overly yellowed at all it's in pretty good condition it just has a little bit of dog ear in the corner but that's about it it goes through the entire setup explanation of what you're looking at, uh, how to move the knobs, the dials, how to score, how to place the markers, and it tells you what the lights and sounds are, and then there's an alternate game on the back end. I mean it's a it's kind of complicated but we'll see how it goes and how much of it still works. Here are the targeting knobs, or I think. 
And the underside. It's a battery compartment. Some of it's cracked. And here's a piece of a mirror. Which I'm not sure what. And some more pieces. Uh, the uh, contents have shifted during travel. I hope it doesn't interfere too much with how it works. You can see on the side there, it took a hit. And this guy takes a deep battery. And there's no on switch, so I think it's just if the battery's in, the toy's on. And it doesn't really do anything. Let's look up the manual and see what we need to do. So, directions. Step one. Use range and azimuth knobs to move the target site under clear area on crossboard. Important, the target site can pass from one half of the radar screen to the other only through the clear area. Range knob moves target site in or out from the center. Azimuth knob moves target site in a circular pattern. Okay, this is kind of goofy. And I don't know what I'm doing. Ooh, what's that? I think that means something. Let's, switch, let's turn the battery around. I may have it in backwards. Okay, you hear that? That's, there's this little spring thing, and when I touch it, It's like one of those electric handshake machines. I don't know that. Uh, I don't know what that means yet. Whether you score a hit or a miss, keep hunting the subs. But watch out for mine. They can cost you a turn. Okay. That means you hit a mine. That's awesome. It still works. It's 55 years old. Okay, here is the the range knob. It's uh moves the thing back and forth. That's cool. It's really complicated actually. Like it's simple, but it's this get this for being as old as it is, this is really cool. It's over engineered, but it's really cool. With that in mind, I understand now what they mean by clearing the area from one side to the other. That little arm has to be at the outer end before it can cross to the other side. Back and forth, vice versa. So let's see what we got in the package. I'm going to do this with an X-Acto blade and not tear apart everything like that. Be respectful here. So the parts breakout says we have eight green subs. You can see the little sub symbol here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it says that we should have eight gray subs. That is indeed a sub. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nice and even, very fair. Alright, it says that we should have eight protective mines, four for each side. And 
and that looks like it's all there. It's... Yep, eight. And then two sets of black, red, and yellow erasable grid markers. I'm not going to open these guys because they're just crowns and I think we can do without. Alright, let's put the radar screens in and start to set up the board. So this one is the broken screen. Only one side was broken, I don't... Alright, the idea of the game. Each commander's fleet is placed in secret battle formation under the radar screen on his own side of the sonar subhunt. He must search out the enemy fleet on the opposite side by firing death sarges. Taking care not to strike mines while moving the target, slight light flashes, buzzer alarms, and observation through the periscopes signal success or failure of his attack. Place fleets in battle formation. 1. Put sub-scout near enemy waters. Each commander puts one sub of his own fleet into the opponent's side of the sonar sub-hunt as a scout. 2. Put fleet of seven subs in home waters. Each commander secretly places his seven remaining subs horizontally or vertically in any battle formation he likes on his own side. Each holds up his radar screen so his opponent cannot see where he places his subs. Okay, continuing number three, set protective mines. Each commander sets his four mines in protective positions around his subs. He presses each mine firmly into the square hole. They will not go into round holes. Then he closes the screen. Some of these are really hard to get in. Square peg, round hole type situation. Okay, section D, arm the fleets. Next, the commander arms his fleet by turning his mine's hit dial to zero and his arming knob dial to six. This will give his fleet a firepower of six depth charges on each turn until he strikes a mine. Section E, adjust the score. He sets all seven dials on his sub's sunk scoring panel to green. I set all mine to red, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at something that's been bothering me. I want to see what this is all about. It's periscope. Then you watch through your periscope while your opponent tries to find them with the sonar. Oh, wow, that's really cool. They really went for the authenticity on this thing. 
And I'm guessing that's where the mirror, the other mirror came from that I found. All right, let's look at the rules for scoring real quick. If a light flashes, it's a hit. The sub is sunk. Two, if nothing happens, it's a miss. Three, if a buzz is heard, uh, a mine has been struck, and hitting your own sub is you lose your firepower by two depth charges. H, end of term for attacking commander. Uh, after you've fired all your depth charges, you must return the target site to the clear area. Section I, now the defending commander's turn to attack. Okay, so this is cool. You can see the targeting dealy, dealy do underneath the plastic, so it looks like a sonar screen. Scan the field with the sonar scope. Get ready. I love this. They really went out all out on it. Get ready and push the firing button. Here's what happens when you score a hit. That's one sub gone. That's where the crowns come into play, so it's a lot like Battleship. And it works. It's That's crazy. After 55 years, all these little dealy dupes still work. This thing is really awesome. I did notice, though, when I was testing this all out that you need to be in a semi-low light environment to get everything out of it. So how it works is there's a pinhead at the bottom of that arm and when you depress it down if that pin hits something and it presses it up it turns the light on if you press it down and it, you're on a blank space it doesn't trigger the pin and so it doesn't light up. It's really cool. Okay, and then that's where that little buzzer comes in. So if you run over a mine, it triggers the buzzer automatically. Now, I've seen this type of mechanism before. Careful, if you touch the sides, you blew it. So that spring is surrounded by a metal circle, and if that spring gets moved and touches the wall of the metal circle, it completes the circuit and does the little buzz thing. So there is a lot going on with this toy, and it's, it's really awesome. I can only imagine what, you know, a seven or a nine year old in the 60s would have thought of something like this. It wouldn't fly today. It's probably too hard for kids to get the handle, but everything about this toy is awesome. All right, how the battle is won. The battle is over when the one fleet commander surrenders due to the reduced firepower when his mind style reads lose. Or when the fleet commander has sunk in all seven of his enemy's subs. If the players agree before this game starts, a commander whose firepower has been reduced to two depth charges may continue to fight, using only two depth charges per turn instead of surrendering. There's a lot of rules and a lot of stuff going on. There's even a second game auction. Game two is played in the same manner as game one, except for two things. Placing the fleets, sub scouts are not used, and scoring subs sunk. Placing the fleets before it begins, scoring subs sunk, the game ends when. And you can read all of this.
And that's about it for me. Aside from playing a full game, you guys know how everything works. So if you like this stuff, hit that thumbs up button. Like and subscribe. Tune in for more. Thanks, and I'll leave you with this. It's the exciting naval battle game where you use the sonar scope to sink your opponent's submarine. Scan the field with the sonar scope, get ready, and push the firing button. Here's what happens when you score a hit. That's one sub goal. Whether you score a hit or a miss, keep hunting the subs. But watch out for mines. They can cost you a turn. Here's how you place your subs and mines. Then you watch through your periscope while your opponent tries to find them with the sonar. The first one to sink seven subs wins the game. See if you can sink the subs in Mattel's Sonar Sub Hunt game. See it wherever toys are sold. And remember, you can tell it's Mattel. It's well.